So in the book, I've listed 100 inventions and I've also quoted the relevant patent number. And the invention that appeals to me the most is known as the cavity magnetron. Now in 1942, the British merchant fleet lost over 7 million tonnes of cargo in the North Atlantic. Most of this was sunk by torpedoes fired from German submarines or the U-boat fleet, and many merchant seamen died in the waters of the North Atlantic. The problem was that food, equipment and fuel couldn't reach mainland Britain. Unless a way could be found of identifying the U-boats, the whole British war effort would be undermined. And what was required was a compact radar device that could be fitted into fighter aircraft. If we move back to the 1930s, uh, Rob, um, Robert Watson Watt, who was a descendant of the Scottish engineer James Watt, had invented radar. And radar involves transmitting a pulse microwave beam of radiation, the wavelengths around 10 centimetres. And when it hits a metal object, such as an aircraft fuselage, it, the beam gets absorbed and re-radiated back to the receiver. And by measuring the time it took takes to get back to the receiver, the echo, the operators on the ground can work out where the planes are in the sky. At the beginning of World War II, a series of radar transmitters were installed on the south coast and east coast of England. But they were very large, rather like pylons, and they worked very well for detecting aircraft, say, 100 miles away. But the problem was how to get a compact radar device. And the solution came from the University of Birmingham. Henry Boot and John Randall worked at the University of Birmingham and they invented a device called the cavity magnetron. It was about the size of a saucer. And think of a little block metal and a central cylindrical core was driven at, was removed. And one electrode was placed on, on the central axis. Essentially, when it worked, they could generate a rotating circular beam of electrons. Into the side walls they, they cut cavities and essentially the, as the electrons rotated an energy exchange occurred between the rotating electron beams and the cavities and this led to emission of, of a microwave beam. The important thing was it, it, these cavity microtrons could be fitted into an aircraft and so the fighter aircraft of the RAF could detect, say, conning towers of the enemy submarine. Now, at the beginning of the World War II, a mission, a UK government mission called the Tizard mission, went to America and had a very important cargo with them, a prototype cavity magnetron. And it was far ahead of anything else being developed at the time. And during World War II, I understand about a million of these devices were manufactured in America and by mid-1943 they were installed in, in the RAF aircraft. And that helped to win, in my view, that helped to win the Battle of the Atlantic. I think very few people have heard of the cavity magnetron, but I think it's a story that's, that's worth telling. Now after the war, there was a lot of work going on in the air of microwaves. And, it has, and Percy Spencer was working for an American company called Raytheon. And it has been said that one day he was walking past a bank of equipment that was generating microwaves and he had a bar of chocolate in his pocket and the chocolate softened. And that gave the idea that you could use microwaves to heat up food. And that led to, in the late 1940s to the development of the first type of microwave ovens. And they were very large at that time, but, but the early models contained cavity magnetrons. So I think when People nowadays use microwave ovens at home. It's always use, useful to think about how they, how they were developed.